And welcome back to another Super Coach video with me, JD. You're joining me for the round 15, 16 Super Coach review. Normally I have it up and I can just quickly check, not so subtly, uh, but I have not opened Super Coach this week so far, which we'll go through shortly. Um, uh, but like, firstly, I've been busy, so apologies for getting this out later than usual. Um, but with not doing the podcast, I actually got a bit of flexibility on when I can release these now, which is nice. Um, but yeah, uh, my week did not go good. And so we're going <laughs> to do real time live reaction of exactly how bad it is. I haven't checked it. Um, I, I think I scored about 2150 and I think that's about 200 points below par. So I'm expecting something like a thousand rank drop, maybe, maybe more than a thousand. That'd be pretty bad. Um, so yeah, let's, let's do that now. Let's see exactly how bad that is. And we'll go from there. Yeah, that's a, oh, I scored a 2184, so it's a little bit better than what I thought. That's a massive rank drop. Oh my God. I mean, I, I me as well as many others had maybe like 25, 2600 projected. And then uh, the what we came through at the end was pretty bad, but that is exceptionally average. So let's go through the side. And I guess what's, oh, I was around 16. I guess what's like most concerning about this is usually post buys, teams are done, trades are finished. I know this year with extra trades, we've got maybe a couple more weeks, so that's the case. But you pretty quickly get a vibe for if you were going to cruise about the same rank, go up, go down towards the end of the year. To lose a thousand ranks like first week out of the buys just shows that I am I might be headed for my worst ever finish. So I've been playing super coach, but I, oh, maybe like eight years, something like that. Um, but I only, I played leagues for like the first five years. And even then, only playing leagues, um, only playing for league funnels, I don't think I had a finish ever below about 5,000. Um, last three years playing for overall and kind of results have been better. But um, yeah, to to be in threat of falling back to 5K is not good. All right, so let's have a look at the team. Uh, firstly, I think pat on the back, trades last week were, were decent ones. So we got rid of Raul for Rosie. Um, and this looked like it was going to be really good, but Rosie kind of just ended up tunning in the end. Raul looks pretty cooked uh, and actually had less mid time right if i bring up some cbas i think from what i saw that game he had less mid time 79 so we gained some points there and then secondly we bought in jake coldwell over uh rankin with the idea that we'd get both um but yeah with coldwell's break even and the the nice matchup against the cats got him in so um a 127 which was, i think was like 60 over his break even so he made a, a like good 30k um so trades last week Spot on. We got mega points out of both of those, which you love to see. 65, it's his lowest CBAs for the year, Raul. Um, pretty interesting for them to get Flanders in there, who did look very good in the midfield again. Um, so, yeah, so that's good. But, like, the few things went quite badly. So, firstly, I think five out of my eight mids got tagged in some form. Um, in Goulden, Merritt, Sarong, Butters, and Dawson, uh, all to varying levels. Um, Bont, we didn't end up looking at captain or vice captain just because of the back issue. And then, you know, North have been running a tagger. Surely they'll tag him, right? So that's a big lol. Ended up going with Merritt because Cats are a very strong, positive matchup and they haven't been running a tagger. Uh, and I was really tossing up about whether or not I would have taken the Zorka 115. I, I think I said to myself at 120, I would have taken, but 115, Merritt's been tagged last two weeks, been fine. Cat's been giving up points. We'll just run it back. And this looked like a good move to about halftime where I think he was on something like 70 points. So I was pretty content with the choice. Um, but without relitigating how badly umpired that, that third quarter was, um, the Dons fell away pretty heavily and so did he. And now if I'd looked at the weather cast, knew it was uh, running beforehand, I probably wouldn't have gone Merritt because it does take away from one of his strengths and his ball usage. But yeah, uh, that's on me for not being switched on enough. Um, you know, doing rock climbing stuff with the kids instead kind of doesn't, doesn't, isn't the best prep for, uh, for Supercoach on a Saturday. And then we had a few other things go wrong as well beyond the tags. And I must say, actually, like, I'm not going to go through all these in detail, but Goulden, epic fourth quarter to bring that back to a 95. I think he ended up being the third highest scoring Swan, which is pretty crazy. They just, like, in the fourth, it just seemed to be like, do whatever you want. And, and maybe, like, he wasn't really tagged by Sharp, but at least he was being held more accountable than what he had been previously. In the fourth, it was just like, go on the ball, go to defense, do whatever you want, Goulden. And he racked it up. Um... Uh, Sarong was like started off really, really strong in this game. And then they moved the tag to him, I believe. Um, Dawson, uh, and I think it's going to be a, a problem for Sarong, like just getting tags going forward. Dawson, uh, like this is the most confusing one for me because part of the reason for not going Rankin was I, like, there should be a tag here. Bedford should go straight to him. Um, you know, good size, should be able to run with like all this type of stuff. And they didn't do it. I, like, I don't get it. They tagged Dawson instead. Um, so Rankin had another huge score, which I hope that I hope I've got enough money now. Actually, with Baker scoring a bad one again, 
but that, that was insane to me. And they had to release it um, and release Dawson and he junked it up as well. So all of my mids that got tagged, including Butters, got like decent scores and given that they were tagged and the exception being the one I captained. So anyway, um, it is what it is. That's my first captain score below 110 this year as well. So on a good streak and it's all come to an end. So um, mids getting tagged, bad. Merit C, bad. Uh, not having Walsh in as well. Like Sunday, I had to turn the TV off because between Moore and Walsh, like absolutely killing me. I think there's uh, Sinclair might have as well. Just these guys that are, some of them are more highly owned, some of them are more pods, but um, putting up 140s where I've got guys that have gone 50, 60, stuff like that. Just, yeah, disaster, disaster. All right, um, defense. So uh, like a couple of things here. Um, like Dacos, she's all Ryan, all fine. Uh, Houston, 59. So when we talked about, part of the reason why I didn't want to get him earlier on is because of the variance in his scoring. And we finally got the down game. So um, we actually, we think we got back to like good old Houston of old because we got the 174 uh, three weeks ago and then we've got the 59 um, to back it up. So um, yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, Fisher scored 83 off 44, 45% time ground, I want to say. Uh, so actually like a very respectable score. They said it was just tactical, but also that he'd received knocks. I'm not worried about that one whatsoever. Uh, and then Nick Martin, um, the 75, uh, which is a th like obviously not a great score. The wet weather conditions don't help him at all. Um, so look, he's he's okay enough to hold. If you're in a luxury spot um, and you can get rid of some of these guys, the, people, the ones people are going to point to are like Sinclair and... Um, uh, uh, Newman as the two that are interesting. Um, you know, Newman, now that uh, Zach Williams is out of there, um, is, is found some pretty good form and he's got uh, a nice like run home. We've talked about that cut and run a lot. Um, so 43 break even, 529k is really not that expensive. I can see why people would jump to him as a pod on the way home. And then Sinclair at halfback has um, done really well. I think like the tough part with Sinclair, I mean, ooh, apart from that price, 623, so it's is he the most expensive defender now? He might be. So this is a pretty luxury spot. He's three on average is 141. That's crazy good. Um, uh, and someone who Sean Whitney named mentioned, like, what about him if he goes back? And I kind of like fobbed it off because like, oh, the scoring wasn't that much better as a defender, but it clearly is this year. Um, so I, he's the, the flag with Sinclair has got the James Jordan tag this week and I can't see it going to anyone else. I'm also confused about what the Saints do with their midfield because... Uh, Sinclair was in there because he provided a bit of spark, a bit of pace. And I know I had some people return, but honestly, they're not it. Like it's, um, yeah, quite, quite confusing. They have other halfbacks already. So I don't know. I mean, Sinclair's been like played well this year, no matter where he's played, but in terms of super coach fantasy halfback seems to definitely be working the treat this year. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, him and Newman, but yeah, the, the problem with Sinclair this week is he's got the, uh, James Jordan tag. Um, at least not going to get any cheaper though. After that though, is his run okay? Adelaide, West Coast, Essendon. Really, I mean, Essendon might use Guelphie. But yeah, like maybe he's okay for the few weeks after this. Their run home's pretty good, Saints. Adelaide, West Coast, Essendon, Brisbane, Richmond, Geelong, Carlton. Carlton, final game, Sydney next week is the bad bookends, but otherwise looks good. Um, and then look for me... <laughs> A McKercher seven-week hold. Like, no wonder I've struggled um, over the past couple of months. That's been an absolute disaster. can only imagine, like, the difference having sex in instead of McKercher over this period would have made. I'm not going to lament it too much because um, I think I brought McKercher in for the right reasons, and I think he would have delivered if he hadn't been injured. I guess the thing I've got to go back to is whether or not I held him in the right situation. And I think this is just, like... Um, I mean, this is all, reeks of Oliver last year where if I've just traded someone in, I have a really hard time letting them go straight away. And I think there's like a lesson in that. It's actually, there are some other plays where I didn't have that issue this year. Um, I got rid of them quite quickly, but for those that still have low break evens, especially like McKercher, I struggle to do it. Uh, and maybe there's a lesson in, in that for next year. I should be more decisive and not make two mistakes, right? Which was, I mean, I don't think bringing him in was a mistake, but then not make the mistake of holding him when I could have uh, moved him on. Um, so I'd have to go back and look what other trades I did in those weeks, because maybe there just wasn't a natural point to ever get off McKercher. But yeah, I hope he comes back and scores well for me because is, yeah, absolute uh, disaster class. Uh, mids, whatever, are uh, pretty frustrating. I don't have a uh, loop. So hopefully someone actually gets dropped in the mids. Uh, rucks were bad, but I think outside of maybe like Cherry, all the rucks were bad this week. Um, 
Uh, so like, yeah, not gonna bemoan that too much. I, well, whatever. The rucks, the rucks. I'm not. Basically, if you've got any two rucks, just hold them. I, I, I've got no way of predicting who's going to be best from here. I'm sure if you look at the matchups, there's probably some indicators, but it's been been uh, quite up and down. So, um, yeah, I mean, Gorn's got. Uh, we'll talk about this probably with vice captain captain, but Gorn's got uh, West Coast this week, which you'd think he'd be good, but they targeted him well and held him well last time uh, from memory. So, I, like, I can't see myself really going there, especially coming off a poor game, but this is also the type of game that he might bounce back from, right? West Coast is the easiest for Rucks to score on, and they held him to a 109 last time with uh, all the extra effort and attention they put into him. Uh, all right, and then the forwards, which we've been talking about. So, yeah, Caldwell, like Flanders, Heaney, Zorko, Caldwell, Fisher, Rankin, I guess, makes the top six now for mine. Um, Moore, obviously, a very good short shout and had a really big game on the weekend as well. Um, I mean... Surely Rankin's tagged this week, no matter who who they're playing. So I think it's the only hard part with Rankin. Like he does seem the type that would be susceptible to a tag. Uh, I mean these these two here are my top two trade targets this week. By the way, Humphreys and Rankin. Um, Martin's getting traded out as a as a luxury. That's fine. I can see why people would do it. Um, it's interesting, right? Like people talked about getting him kicked out of half back, and Essen's lost the last three now that he's out of half back. So I wonder if Essen revisit that decision. Wonder, wonder, wonder. Uh, all right, so who's ranking got? Uh, Lions. So does Barry go to him? Well, I think he would. Yeah. So, I mean, I, th I think, think that's the risk he gets tagged. They've got the last game of the week. So I guess you're probably loopholing someone before that and then um, moving uh, moving ranking on based on how your loop scores. Bit tricky though, if like Dowling's one of your rookies, Dawson plays beforehand. Um, oh, hopefully Brown has dropped this week. After being a late in sub again, I, I kind of need that. Um, all right, so yeah, forward. So yeah, um, Kerno bad week. This like against Tigers, not not expected. And I think he had one of the younger guys playing on as well and towed him up. So um, unexpected down game, and you know hurts with having the twenty third not being able to loop because I copped the fifty four and a sixty seven, and I'm pretty sure I would have like um, kept a McCurt to score over one of them this week. In fact, I, I wouldn't have played Baker. I would have still played Kerno given the matchups. Just know, based on my decision making, that's exactly what I would have done. And then Baker started off well in this game. I think he had 45 to halftime and then faded. I am happy to get rid of him. I'll have a look at the CBAs just to make sure, but I don't think he's anywhere near it at the moment with uh, the structure they're going. Baker was down to six. So yeah, it's a pretty clear sign to jump off. Uh, okay, so... Um, trades this week. Baker out and Rankin in. Where are you, Rankin? If you got a good three round average, there you go. Um, and I need 133k. So the, the plan here was always to trade out Jai Clark and oh, I can't get in the Cats guy. What is he, Humphreys? Because uh, he's 117, isn't he? Lawson Humphreys is 117. He looks good. I liked, liked the look of him. He um, seemed very decent. So I'm probably then bringing in a loophole. And realistically, best loophole for me is going to be defender mid, um, just so I've got someone to move with McKercher. So let's have a look at who is a defender that is under 120k um, with mid. Uh, the only one that is, uh, is sad. Oh, it's pretty sure it's not a good loophole. Okay. Because uh, I think they play, f or we play Friday this week, and I think we've got early games on the run home. So it actually won't be useful to loophole, but it's the only way I can get the trades done. So Baker scoring poorly, um, uh, and uh, Rankin not being tagged has cost me a much better rookie in that spot, which is pretty frustrating. Um, okay, so if that's the trades this week, let's, um, well, let's hit the old optimize button. See what we come up with this week. Oh, Projected 2452 for those that are playing at home. Um, what's it done here? Who's it benched? It's benched Rosie, which is interesting. I guess he's still got a low uh, projected. That's not what we'll be doing this week. Um, who to port play? Dogs. Yeah, it's a fine matchup. They like the stoppages there. Um, so Flanders will be popping back into the forward line for sure. Uh, is Kerno seriously got better than a 71? He's got 81 projected. There you go. Um, uh, it's Kerno, Kerno and Rankin are the ones I'd like to be looping. 
Uh, I don't think this is a particularly good matchup, although GWS have had the injuries to some of their key defenders. So do I play him out this week to bounce back? P possibly, possibly. Um, Dowling, I, I don't know who I loop in the midfield now. And I guess uh, I've got no loop in defense, which is pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. If we have a uh, laid out this week, it's a bit of, bit of disaster. Can't even loop Fisher with Kerno because of the... Um... Oh, no, I might be able to because of Brown. And then I've got to um, get... This is going to be painful. I've got to have to go back in my trades, trade Dawson up into defense, move side into the mid, and then um, Brown into the forward line is how we'll set up this week. So I'm not going to do that now because it's going to take a bit of fiddling, and I don't want to do that. I, I want to wrap this up and go make some dinner. So um, let's jump into vice captain captain this week. Uh, so Merritt has Collingwood, um, who won't tag him. So after three weeks of being tagged and working through them somewhat okay, I mean, I think this is a good bounce back. He's got a 127, 133, 123 in his last three against Pies, which is good, but unexciting. Like really with your vice captain, you want to be hitting those spike scores. Um, so that's a little bit of a concern. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think like vice captain probably goes there. I mean, I guess Dacos against us though, right? Like that's probably the other one that makes a lot of sense because we're probably not tagging him either. Uh, he's gone 128 and 145 in the last two against us. Um, yeah, so maybe I want to go like Dacos instead with the form he's in. Uh, so either Dacos or Merritt probably is as VC. Dacos probably got the better ceiling of the two, especially in a game where I think Pies win. Uh, okay. And then let's have a look through the others. So North uh, Gold Coast. I mean, I think, yeah, I can see why it was optimizing to Flanders VC. That makes sense. Um, they are both, well, they're easy matchup for, for mids, according to this. Uh, for those that haven't seen, actually, we'll just quickly show you this. Um, DFS Australia, which we use for defense versus position, or like basically um, which which position score best which with against which teams. And the positions that they use here aren't, based on what's in Supercoach or Fantasy, it's based on where players actually play on, on their calculations. And they have, like, you can go in here and have a look. But they anyway, they've updated this for Supercoach, which is really handy. This is a tool I've been using for Fantasy for a long time. Um, but it lets you look at, um, yeah, for example, like, actually, we won't go into this one, the season long one. That's good for picking players for the rest of the year. Actually, I'll just show you quickly. So, like, say you're looking for inside mids for the rest of the year. You go across this and you look at who's got lots of green or you can sort by average plus minus average. So like Saints have a good run home for mids, inside mids, North, West Coast, Frio, all those. So like if you've got LDU, which I don't have, this run looks pretty good. Uh, if you've got Sarong, this looks pretty good. I mean, the thing you have to overlay with this is like tags. Will they get tagged in these plus matchups? But gives you a good idea for who to trade in based on um, how easy teams are to score on. Um I think it's this one, the very top one. So yeah, you can look at, this is uh, for fantasy, but you can click into last five super coach. So across the last five games, which teams have been giving up the most to Rucks? Geelong, Adelaide, Port. This plus number here is the, the Rucks that played against Geelong. They outscored their average by this much on average. And the percentage here is how many beat their average. So you can look at, for example... Um, uh, Essendon here. So on average, Rucks scored 12 points more against us over the last five games versus their average and half the Rucks beat what their average was. So even though the average, like, you know, it, you're expected to outscore that, not every every Ruck has. So it gives you a good feel for like who's easy to score on who isn't. So yeah, playing um, a Ruck into Geelong as a captain, vice captain is pretty handy. Um, the ones you tend to look at, because like general forwards, uh, I mean, we've got Kerno now, so, and and maybe Dilmore is considered a, a general forward, but there's not too many players you'd be, ever be looking in here anyway. So Carlton had, what did we say? GWS. Um, oh, actually, no, he's a, he's not even general forward. He's a key forward. Uh, so GWS over the last five haven't been too bad. All right. So maybe we actually do consider um, Kerno. Um, inside mids. Uh, so yeah, West Coast has been easy, Collingwood's been easy, Adelaide's been easy. So, I mean, Merritt against Collingwood, you, you start to look at that, that makes sense. West Coast, they're playing Melbourne. Uh, I don't have Clary anymore, so you might have a good week for those that still own. Um, 
Yeah, otherwise you're not really looking at anyone in that matchup. Rux will have a look. So yeah, Geelong, Adelaide, Port. But, you know, there's lots of other positive matchups. So Dogs have Port. Uh, they're in the top top three there. So I guess he's got to come into consideration this week. If you put the 21 on his 109, you'd expect a 130 average, something like that. Um, Who's Gorn playing? Gorn's playing West Coast. That's right. We already talked about it. It's one of the... In Supercoach, it's got it as one of the best matchups. In here, it doesn't. So that's why it's always good to check on this because the Supercoach gold and uh, this don't always agree. Uh, And they put effort into him last time. So it says maybe Gorn, we don't touch. And then designated kick-in is obviously an interesting one as well to look at. So GWS, um, which is really positive. So you might look at that um, for... uh, Is it Newman that plays him this week? It is, right? Yeah. Uh, Newman this week and go like, yeah, that's 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 pretty handy. Um, I mean, does Bedford go to him? Nah, Bedford should go to Walsh, right? Hawks and Richmond. Um, what's interesting is like Saints aren't in there, which is crazy because they've been like big plus all year. I mean, they're still top, top four or five. Hawks, Richmond. No. Oh, I mean, Richmond, actually. So Luke Ryan should be on for a good one. So should Clark, for anyone that has Clark. But didn't he play Richmond earlier this year and not do well? Wasn't that a thing? Or am I misremembering? No, he played uh, them in round eight and scored a 197. I am so misremembering. Okay, so Luke Ryan on the cards this week is a VC option as well, potentially. Don't think I could captain him. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's that's the defense first position tool. Very handy to look f- at for vice captain versus captain. You can also look at that season long view um, for, for who to trade in and consider there. So with all that said, what am I actually looking at? Um, North Gold Coast did, so yeah, I think that, that was the, how I started this, right? Like is North good for inside mids? Not really. Okay. Are they good for... I think North have been more competitive recently, right? That's why the last five might differ from the last 10. Um, so yeah, so, you know, Flanders, maybe not then, but I can see why. Like, I still think it's an interesting option. It should do okay. Uh, Bulldogs Port, probably not touching anyone in those matchups, despite how good Bont's been and predicted to, or projected to be the highest scorer this week. Probably won't touch again. Uh, Drew surely goes to, to Bont this week, right? Like, he has to. Um, what's always interesting is where Goulden is considered I'd have to check I I see him as more like wing defense so Saints are where are they a hard matchup if he's considered an inside mid Saints are still not that great of a matchup so I guess Goulden's off the cards um, Geelong Hawks not touching GWS Carlton like Walsh I think it's hard just given there so like for me, I guess if you, you've got maybe four or five options that you can vice captain, which is Dacos, Merritt, Bont, um, Dacos, Merritt, Bont, Luke Ryan uh, against Richmond, and there's one other one off Flanders. I think they're probably like the top five, maybe VC targets. And then we're looking at a captain in one of these Sunday games, unless you like roll two of these early ones into each other. Like you could roll a Dacos or a Merritt into a Bont, and that may still be possible. Last three games here... Um, so Melbourne West Coast, don't think I touch anyone. Saint Sydney, I guess if you've got Grundy, like um, uh, Marshall's been giving up points, right? Not as much in Supercoach, but he has been. So I guess it just depends on what level of trust you have in him as a C. Uh, and then I think like there's a chance Barry goes to um, Dawson. So like I wouldn't look at Dawson in that game. Maybe you could look at like a. Dunkley or O'Neill, because it's not like the the Crows have been tagging. Uh, Zorko, what's uh, Crows been like for designated kickers? Not good. Kind of leaves me with a tricky spot, right? Because I, like, I don't see really any strong captain options. The interesting one is Ryan, but how many people have been burnt by captaining him? Oh, I'm missing Sarong against Richmond. Richmond don't tag. Okay, so I think it has to be um, Sarong C, and it's like Dacos or Merritt. Um, yeah, what, what do we have here? Richmond, like, top four. Uh, okay, we like that. All right, so that's captain, vice captain for the week, uh, and how you use the defense first position tool, do it yourself. Uh, as always, uh, hope you're doing well, better than I am. Hope the advice has been useful, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.